Wave Traveler Generator is used to simulate vinyl scratching. A series of scratching phrases can be assigned to different notes and the phrases themselves can be fine-tuned to end up with something that sounds pretty close to real scratching. The Wave Traveler is excellent for doing cut-up sample mashing in a vein similar to a lot of hip-hop and other electronic music styles. The way this plugin works can be a little confusing at first, but there are a lot of visual cues to help you understand what part of the audio file is being scratched. To load a WAV file, click on the folder button and browse to where the file is, or drag and drop a file from the FL Studio browser. There are several presets included with FL Studio that are worth checking out just to get a sense of the WAV Traveler's capabilities. To select a patch to edit, left click on a key on the WAV Traveler keyboard. Holding down the key will preview the scratched audio. The selected key is indicated by the orange square above the key. By default, the keyboard shows the note range between C5 and B6. To scroll the view to see other octaves, use the left and right arrows above the keyboard. All edits you make to knobs and scratching paths will apply only to the currently selected patch. The preview panel in the top left shows the whole audio file. The start and end points of the audio is set with the knobs on either side of the file. As you move them, you can see the two orange lines that indicate the start and end of the playback region. You'll also notice the waveform on the right will change to reflect just the selected playback region. The scratch phrase path is drawn across the region in red. This is exactly the same as the path that appears on the right, but is flipped on its side. So the axes are left to right shows the current point of the region being played, and bottom to top shows time. The patch can be set to playback in a tempo-based time or an absolute time by changing the TA switch. Tempo-based will show a time grid behind the sample on the right-hand side up to two bars long. The number of beats is controlled with the speed knob. The beats are differentiated by alternating columns of grey. The number of beats is also indicated in the hint bar as you turn the speed knob. Depending on the length of your sample, this will cause the bass playback speed of the sample to speed up or to slow down. The advantage of using the tempo bass time is that you will be able to get specific words or sounds to fall on particular beats. Right click the speed knob to get various preset lengths. When switched to absolute time, the sample playback time is set as a percentage of the sample's length. Once again, right clicking the speed knob will give various preset percentages. The attack and release knobs allow you to define an envelope for the current patch. To get a sense of how the Pathfind editor works, I'll leave it in absolute mode with the speed set to 100%. A simple two-point linear spline from the start to the end of the sample results in the sample being played back with no stretching. Right-clicking the speed knob and setting it to 50% will halve the speed of the sample. Setting it to 200% will double the speed. Clicking anywhere on the line will insert a new spline point. Click and drag the point to change the rate and direction of playback. As you drag, you'll see an orange line appear indicating at what position within the sample's length the point falls. The axes are left to right for time and bottom to top for sample point. So if you move the spline point in a vertical direction only, you'll be maintaining the time period but altering the amount of the sample being played back across that time. Moving it horizontally means that you are maintaining the amount of the sample being used but altering the speed that it plays back. Notice the graph on the left hand side will update to reflect the changes you make as well. The shape of the lines are defined by right clicking the spline point that precedes the section of the line. You have a range of choices that should allow you to create virtually any shape you need. Half cosine, linear, bezier, tension, quarter sine and quarter cosine. You can also delete a point by right clicking the point and selecting delete. If you're trying to get close to the sound of a hand scratching then the half cosine spline will help you achieve that. To read more about the wave traveler shapes consult the online help. Once you have selected the spline type, all new spline points that you add will automatically have the same type. You can then switch the spline type by once again selecting a spline point and then choosing another point. In addition to the splines, you can mute sections of the audio by using the mute region underneath the graph. Left click and drag to define a muted region. To delete a muted region, right click and drag. Muting parts gives a much more interesting sounding result particularly when you're using complicated sets of mute regions. If you want a more accurate way of controlling the volume, switch to the volume spline. The volume spline uses exactly the same shaping controls as the wave spline. The wave spline is visible in the background, which helps to match the volume spline with it accurately. The wave traveler also includes the ability to copy and paste patches from one key to another. Right-click the current patch key and choose copy, then right-click another key and choose paste. The normalize 100% and 50% entries will adjust the wave path to use 100% or 50% of the sample duration. Also included under the right click menu is a list of preset wave splines. You can also save a wave shape for use in other songs. 
The included presets help to give a good overview of the capabilities of the Wave Traveller, as well as being a useful toolkit as a basis for creating excellent sounding scratch effects.